Rwanda has a thriving ecotourism industry. It's home to a third of the world's mountain gorillas, a huge draw for tourists. And rather than exploit them to make money, the government says its priority is to conserve them. That was welcomed by the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund, which is marking 50 years of working to protect animals in Rwanda. I spoke to the CEO, Tara Stawinski. The government of Rwanda is 100% behind conservation, and that is why it has worked so well in the country. They're really leaders in this area. They guide all the work that we do, and, and that's why we are seeing this increase where in so many other areas we're seeing gorilla populations decline. You know, it strikes me, you don't often get to talk about a win-win, but seeing what's happening with the Rwandan economy, seeing how, you know, tourism is growing off the back of this, and the fact that it's also helping the gorillas is sort of this rare rare opportunity to talk about that. Can you take this case study of what it's done for Rwanda and for the gorillas and make it work in other countries? I think you can. I mean, I, I do think there are a lot of things that are unique about Rwanda. I think the infrastructure that they've put in place, um, the fact that the gorillas are very close to the capital, which means they're easy to get to for tourists. Um, but I think gorillas are such an icon in general for people. People really are attracted to them. They want to see them. And so I think tourism programs can be built uh, in other countries that could model after Rwanda. Anytime we talk about ecotourism, which I think this falls into, you have to be careful about balance, though, don't exactly. they? Yeah, and exactly. I know that, you know, we talk to people in the industry and hotels and all of the people that see a lot of opportunity, even when you're investing and bringing the local community in. I know from your end, you've got to be concerned about protecting the animals exactly. and protecting the wildlife surrounding them. Exactly. It's, it's so true, and it is a very delicate balance. And one of the things that does work really well in Rwanda is that the tourism to see the gorillas also directly benefits the local populations. So 10% of the revenue from seeing the gorillas goes back to the people that live around the park. And I think that that's a critical part of any tourism program, that local populations benefit from what's happening with the wildlife. Because you get buy-in. Exactly. They, they see it as their exactly. future. As as well, not just exactly. a philanthropic. Exactly. They're, doing. they're benefiting as well as the wildlife. For people who want to help because we, there's more that needs to be done, how can they get involved? What can they do? If they can't get to Rwanda or a place like that, what can they do? Yeah, I think